asking. I was like, yo, it's not coming. And he was like, no, not yet. I'm like, yo, it's going to be a good show. Right in the car. I was like, why is it not coming? <laughs> he got us. He's like, you'll see. He'll see. I'm like, yeah. We probably lost all our listeners right now. It's just been me these last couple of weeks. And I keep telling them, I'm like, yo. Like, they're really still with the podcast, guys. <laughs> now y'all know why I've been vlogging so much. Like, yeah, see, I'm with, see, oh, I'm with them. Here. They're still here. Oh. <laughs> well, how long it's been since you guys been on, have no. been? Together, no, together. Don't get Josiah, please. He's going to come at my neck. <laughs> I'm coming at all, yeah. It's been like, what, three weeks? Nah, three? we did one, but the audio got fucked up. So it really felt it like, count. it doesn't count. <laughs> So, that was wild, yo. We really put a lot of work and it. facial expressions into that one. Like, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. It was it a good was episode. A good I was. I tried to save it. There was no saving, and I've saved a couple bad ones, like back in our day when little girl. And I say, and I just like warn that the whole description is like my bad. <laughs> 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 the title episode is like our bad, but this one it was there was no saving. Yo, so do we have a topic for today? Yeah, we just kicking it. All right, hold on. Let me do a mic check. And then what's up? Then we mentioned what? No, I was going to say that. I said something. is Natalia. Perfect. Perfect. I figured it's Princess, we were good. go. We're sharing the mic. Right? Yeah, y'all, y'all good at sharing it? Yeah, I'm cool. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Like <laughs> Maybe next <laughs> week. <laughs> next. Oh, I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad smooth. Like, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that, uh, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that question as I try to gather my thoughts. Yeah, well, at this next live show, we're all having a mic. You're not doing Yo, that. Yeah. No more. Oh, yes. Yeah. Bring that yes. energy. Yes. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we hear people. What up? What up? We record in therapy without a degree. We finally all hear. Yeah. It, yeah. See, they, they did not quit people. We still got them. We still got them. We got Zane. Yeah, I got this dope hat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mike <my> Energy. <laughs> <laughs> that was so perfect timing. That was, that was perfect. <laughs> yes. Right, the are you is, the interview? You ain't going nowhere. Right? <laughs> and I got Behind me yes. too. Hello, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> You're gonna have to call. Zane is back. I have Val and Nat between me. This is gonna hey. be comedy. <laughs> yes, it's gonna be ready. It's gonna be some fire. We got Nat Cruz in the building. <laughs> I already got tears in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's What's how you know it's gonna on? be a good. I know episode. my stomach hurts already. This is bad. Oh, I missed you guys. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. I was like, this is my first time. I love it. First time you're here. Yes, yes. Everybody. <laughs> <We're tricky. laughs> it was and your I first time that. a long time ago. It was so good. I could stop it. I was like, you want to see it? Oh, pardon. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm with it. Yo. <laughs> If it was up to me, Woo! we do a pod every day. <laughs> I love it. Oh Loving God. this energy. I want to babe in it. <laughs> hey, we got Princess in the building, too. Shout out to Princess. She's here. Yes. Talking about you, girl. Yes. It's your world, girl. Yo. <laughs> Shout out to this guy, too. Zane literally made her a model. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Princess is a model. And uh, I will continue to keep shooting her with every single model that I shoot. Every with. single model. Every single one. And they love her. Is she ever going to get like the front of like Zane Magazine? Like, I might think about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll, I'll do an animal edition. Yo. <laughs> that might, listen, yeah. that'll probably be the hottest selling it probably, issue yeah, in the market right in now. In the market. All snap. That's a wrap now. Prin- Princess, you ready? I am Animal Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be beast man beast y'all princess i gotta get your contract ready let's go oh yeah she got pop. i'm with it she's gonna probably lick the contract too <laughs> but yo finally happy y'all, y'all here yeah this is what's up it's been it's been yeah. good that's he's, i'm he's happy like, y'all I'm, I'm happy y'all here <laughs> no, no. Like, it sounded yeah. like you said joe oh, no, no. <laughs> Well, I'm here. Yeah, it it's Joe's in the building. Accent. It was Joe. Joe. I'm talking my Spanish now, I like too. it. But now, we've been together. We did a kickback and chill show. That was fun. Yeah, we were all together, yeah. too. Exactly. That was like the pre. That was the pre. The pre-podcast. That was. Y'all have fun? 
I did have fun. I actually, there was no reason to be that nervous for like five minutes. <laughs> so I was like, so how you know everybody? All right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, all the cameras just zoomed up into that single. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Zane, you need a mic. Hold on. They just zoomed up into Nat, and Nat's like, whoa. <laughs> Whereas we're talking amongst ourselves, like, they have you mic'd up. Like, we're looking at the thing, and it's just zoomed into your face, like, real close and outwards. Like, we know you're watching. <laughs> I see you. I yeah, was like, yeah. oh, shit. <laughs> like, like, mad close, too. Like, really close. But that shit was fun, yo. What about your experience? How was it? It was really good for me actually i i appreciate you guys inviting me first of all it was a good experience uh joe was the one who brought it up to me i was working he was like so i'm going to this you know show in the city therapy without a degree crew and i was like cool he was like want to come i was like sure (laughs) because i'm like trying to start my own podcast you know what i'm saying reflections of the vow coming up shortly this weekend okay check it out near you (laughs) reflections with vow but um yeah so he knows i'm starting that up so he was like you know it's a good way to go out there and just see what's out what other pods are out i was like yeah you're right and i met a lot of people i networked with a lot of artists and it was just great i'm actually you know networking with one of them now or a couple, two or three of them right now, actually. So I'm not gonna yeah. spoil anything, but yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I can't wait. I know. Not gonna drop any names. Right, right. But yeah. nah, it, it was it was a dope experience. It, it was really fun. I think I can't wait till it gets comes out and it gets released. I can't wait too. I'll be on the lookout. Yes, it's gonna be dope. And if anyone wants to see a little behind the scenes, film the whole entire thing. The whole the whole time we were from the from the car ride to the time we left to the time I left my keys. So the BTS is on our YouTube. You can go check that out. <laughs> yes. And times. also, what are y'all been doing? Like, where are y'all been at? Saving the world, fighting crime. Oh damn, that was ready for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was um, what was I doing? No, I was I was been bro. This is what really happened. I'm gonna tell you the story. So my job did some fuck shit, right? And so I I no longer work there. So now I am freelancing as a cinematographer and photographer. Which you've already been. Which I've already been full doing. Full time. So now full I'm just full time right now. So I've been hustling like uh, a motherfucker. <laughs> bleep all you need to bleep, but that's that's what's going yeah, no on. No bleep. Y'all know how we do. No bleep. I don't give a damn. So that's what's going on right now. So I, I've been hustling and I actually had more opportunities within one week pay for something. Pay, enough money I made in a week than I made in a month. Doing the other job. Exactly. Being Being miserable. You're wasting all that time. Now, joyful and pockets full. So, yeah. Wow. So, that teaches you a lot. That teaches you that you only stop yourself. Absolutely. You got to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't let other people feed you. Yeah. Ooh. Come on now. We're going to put that. I'm going to make. Now, I'm going to have to do a silhouette with that quote in your face. (laughs) (laughs) Uh oh. I know. Just like the example. Put the one that says, uh, 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 closed mouth doesn't get fed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Let's go. <laughs> right. I guess can't be choosing. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, nah, what about you? Where you been? What you been doing? <laughs> Nataline. <laughs> Nataline. No, I mean, yeah, I've been, I, honestly, I've been busy. Um, But I got lucky the past couple of days. Listen, it's tax season. I've been fucking going crazy doing this tax stuff and daycare stuff and all of that shit. And um, I can't complain, though. I'm like, I've been enjoying myself because, like I was saying, like the last time, I was on a podcast. I feel like one of my big lessons coming into the year was like rest. Like I need rest and I need to like respect and like listen to my body more. And I've been definitely doing that. Oh, my gosh. I think every day this week I just get home, put Melo to sleep, and then I fall asleep on the bed. And I know June's mad. You're going to listen to this puppy. And I am so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, you know, you know the drill. He comes into the room and he's like, so you're going to come out of bed? And I'm like, no. Like no, I'm staying here, and it's like nine o'clock. So I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy this while it lasts. Oh yeah, I I am man because I know next week I am busy and it's not gonna be like that anymore. But yeah, so I've been staying busy, man. But enjoying enjoying this like s- this slow week, you know. Word. That's good. It's always good to enjoy some peaceful and quietness. Got to take advantage of it. You do. You've been out here tattooing, tattooing Dre Love. Oh, I see that. Dre. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, I saw that. that was you. Yeah, he's nice, man. He, oh my gosh, he's so funny. He was telling me, Dre, Dre, I know you're gonna hear this too, <laughs> but you know, we know now. I know your secrets as to why you're R and B artist. 
Nessa Insider. Mm. Oh. He says, and I know you're going to quote me on this one, man. Um, he loved Kobe. He wanted, like, you know, he aspired to be like him, but then he was too short. And I was like, well, that's why you're an R&B artist. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it works out. And a damn good one, too. Right. So, that's true. A, it works out. Right? Word. Reason, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, Yeah, you might not be tall, but now you gotta be what you meant yeah. to be. Word. You got good vibes, R and B vibes. vibes. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. He kills that shit. He does, what? man. What? Um and baby. speaking of that too, I actually went and I discussed it. I thought I said my feelings with uh the interview we had with Jay Bugs last podcast. But what was y'all take on the whole Kobe situation and everything? And you know, me and her talked we actually found out when when she was doing her podcast. So what about y'all? Yeah. Like what, what what's y'all take on that? honestly like there's like it's so hard to put it into words because you know like i don't follow sports or nothing like that so like you know this he's a human being like any one of us you know what i'm saying and you're you have somebody that was this is routine this is like you know him getting into a helicopter is like us getting into a car this was nothing new and to to think that you do something so routine that you do every day and then this kind of thing happens. It's like, it's just so devastating. As a mom, I can't imagine, you know, ha- like looking at my kid knowing that this is it, you know, and it's just, um, I don't even know what to think. Like, it, now it's settling in because it's real. Like, this isn't some fake nonsense. Like, this has really happened. So I, I don't know, man, it's just horrible to to think that, you know, I mean, like, that's it. Our existence is gone. From one moment to the next, that's it. We're done. We don't exist anymore. That's it. Everything, we just have memories. You know what I'm saying? Of of us. It, so instant. It could just come out of nowhere. It's just, yeah. You know, and I and I think for a lot of people that were, you know, his fans or even just, like, like people like me, like, it... You know, you don't think about... Like, I don't think the average person thinks about death every single day. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I think that kind of was it was so shocking to people that when they saw they're like wow like i really have to take a step back and just appreciate things for what they are and really like think about like if if this is the last interaction that i have with this person am i going to be okay with that is it going to sit well with me you know because you could leave and be gone from one moment to the next like nothing is promised you know what i'm saying yeah that's exactly what i think about to a lot of people i personally didn't know kobe but <laughs> I knew of him. I knew his reputation. I knew that he was from the Lakers. But I didn't really have any emotional tie or inspirational tie to him like any other person had. So I wasn't going to sit here and post and do a trendy thing that everybody on social media is doing. So like out of respect to him, I just said, you know, I apologize for, you know, I hope that he rests in peace. But like I'm not going to sit here and post and act like I knew him. But like I, I, I agree with you. I think it just... For those people who never experienced a close death or a death in their life, and this probably was their first impact, this probably was their first shock or their first reflection, like, oh, snap, you know, we don't have all the time. Because, look, this person who was this big, known person that had money that was unstoppable ended up in just one day losing all that. You know what I mean? So I'm not safe neither. So maybe I should, you know, rekindle from this person or that I'm deciding not to talk to or that I have bad blood with and talk to them right now because look at what happened to Kobe. You know what I mean? But it's 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 sad that it has to take towards that for us to like shake up or feel some kind of uncomfortability to actually make those changes or make those moves from happening. Oh, yeah. But that's just my take on it. What about you? When I heard about it, I thought it was fake. I was hoping that I was like, oh, man, somebody's fucked up making a meme like this. So then I was like, other people started posting. I was like, whoa. And then I was like, yo, this shit's crazy. So I, you just hear me in the house because my mom was home. I was like, get the fuck out of here. And mom was like, what happened? I was like, Kobe just died. She's like, what? Kobe just d-? No. And then she got emotional. And I was just like, yo. Like, MJ is always, like, my number one. So, Kobe was in that top five. So, Kobe passing away so suddenly, especially with, like, all those people, including mm-hmm. his daughter. Yeah. I'm like, I thought it was it was the most unreal. Like, I, I was literally working on something. Yeah. Fucked up my whole day. Couldn't even function. So, at that point, I was like, yo, like, people don't get it. Because I, I, I didn't need that lesson to learn. Sure. So, it was just more so uh, a reinforcement on, like, yo, yeah. just let whatever bad shit you on, just let that shit go. Yeah. 
It's not yeah. worth it. It really isn't. Just let that shit go. If you have, you know, cut the, all the bad blood all you know, just, just, just be honest with the person. Like, hey, reach out with them. Kill your pride. Just talk to that person. Yeah. That's it. That's hard, though, because, like, let's, let's say you're not the person that did the wrong. Now you have to put your pride down. You already made your amends. You already tried everything you did to make an amends, and there's the person that's not refusing to do anything yeah. so at that point what do you do do you stay and try to make it work and try to take it out or just walk away yeah i'm i'm the kind of person i could like hate somebody with the fire of a thousand suns and have a great life like right. and live good and not like you know what i'm saying like y- you could like how do you say i could have bad blo- i get bad blow with somebody or just be like know that this person like wronged me and still live a full life because I don't expect this person to apologize or I'm not trying to pull no sort of false apology. Like, like I get, I told you where you're coming from, but I, but I agree with you on that too. Like, because it's not, for, for me, it's not a pride thing. It's more so like, if you wronged me, that's your responsibility yes. and not my responsibility. So therefore, it's not my responsibility to beg you for an apology. It's your responsibility to come back and to talk see to me and realize what you did wrong and be accountable for those actions. So I definitely get where you're coming from. Fuck that. I tell my friends, my <laughs> friends know that my friends know they'd be like, yo, like, am I wrong? I'd be like, nah, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, fuck that <laughs> shit. Like, you, you gotta say what you know. gotta say. And, and you know For what I'm real. saying? On the same note where it's like, it made a lot of people realize like, hey, like I have, to, I, I should take these moments and really, um, you know, enjoy them and like hold them and cherish them. And at the same time, maybe I shouldn't keep bad blood with like, let's say, like softer situations that are more forgivable. Everything else, man, that shit's still up in the air. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you going. Going what, what? What do you want me to say? What about COVID? <laughs> no, 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 no. Nah, we, well, we got, you have a topic coming up soon. Um, but yeah. yeah, now the last thing I want to say regarding that, I pretty much touched upon it on the last week's episode, but the most, what hurt me the most is his daughter. You know, him going with his daughter. Like, that was like, wow. Like, because, you know, at least, um, I think it's Vanessa. His, his his was his wife's name. It's gonna hit her really really hard. Like it's it's already hard to lose a loved one, mm-hmm. but now to lose your daughter like that's just crazy. You know, to yeah. at that age of thirteen, like you know, it's never gonna be the same after that. That's you're, you're done for life. So I just hope uh, and, and send prayers and blessings to her. And that's it. And also with this, it's crazy because I think this is part of one of the ones I said it last week as well that this hit so many different generations of people that um yeah, yeah. I just hope that all those different generations get to see that lesson and hear that lesson. You know, like this is the first time in a while that it was like our parents felt this and, you know, our kids felt this, like little kids, like kids play basketball, you know, the kids that are like 14, 15, 16, they knew who Kobe was. So it affected, it's not like, you know, maybe one person dies and it only affects one generation of people. This one is multiple people. So I just hope that they get the lesson out of this, that you can't just go any moment and you just do have to just live your life and, like like what you guys were saying as well with your loved ones. So yeah, live it. Um, but off sad stuff, right? We got a lot a lot of fire topics. Um, I do want to get into you a little bit first. I got some stuff I want to ask. Yes. You. But to, after that, what are the topics we get into? What's the topic you had, and then I have a topic as well. I got I got one. This one you might be on for a minute. Uh, we're not gonna so start. We're not gonna start with it. I want you to preview it. The pre. I want you to preview the topic. Uh, right. Can I just also say that I love how you guys wait. To, to literally talk about it once we're airing. Because there's a lot of people who don't do that. I just wanted Wait, to say that. Like, Wait in between. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if right before recording, for since right now, we could have just talked about these topics, but we didn't have to. I just oh. love it. I'm sorry. I just go ahead. No, no, no. I don't do that pre-production. Yeah, there's people that need to do that pre-production stuff, and I feel like that kind of ruins it, because now what we're going to talk about. Yeah, no. But go ahead. But yeah, preview topic. the topic. Preview the topic? Preview yeah. sure. your topic. Say it. I want to say drop it. it on the spot. All right, so this is what it is. This is the topic. So pretty much is, uh, why should anyone be grateful being in a relationship? Should anyone be grateful? All right, so we got that coming. Why? That's, 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 right. that's, that, if you're going to treat this like a court case. Yes. Please convince me. Then it was... Um, y'all were just talking about something and that made me think of a little in- inside topic that I want to get from all of y'all. If you're dating someone, would you let the other person date or mess with someone of the opposite sex? Oh, well, there's 
Yeah. So I want to get into that. Those are, the, those are the two last <laughs> things, like right? Mm-hmm. But before we get into that, right? Um, I know we all probably have some questions for Val, right? Hi. So what's up, Miss? <laughs> what's going on? Um, so what I want to know is a bunch of stuff, but also like when did you start singing? When did you notice that you have an amazing voice? Like when did it just hit you one day? Because you know, a lot of people probably sing in the shower and stuff like that. But when did you realize, like, yo, I'm fucking a beast? I think it was in the sixth or seventh grade. Okay, tell me about that experience. The first time that I realized it myself that I was a good singer was in the sixth and seventh grade because I didn't believe that I had the ability, but everyone around me believed that I had the ability. So that's how it always goes first, I guess. Uh, (laughs) You know what I mean? I used to sing by myself. I used to practice Christina Aguilera Pepsi commercials over and over again. And that was like 1999, you know, (laughs) somewhere around there in the 90s early 2000s kind of thing and i used to practice um over and over again in selena songs and i used to try to emulate and try to sound like them and i didn't think i had the ability to sound like them or anything i just wanted to you know i just pictured it i literally would be like oh my god i just practiced on it and then one day you know i guess i went to school and my teacher made the whole class sing the star spangled banner and i was the loudest one and then she was like, everybody shut up. And I want Michelle to just sing. And I was like, I'm not singing. I was like, you thought I was singing because I had stage frights. I was just singing to myself, you know, and to myself privately. So when she did that, I was like, nah, I'm not singing. Like, you know what I'm saying? So she was like, all right, let's go outside. She took me outside. She puts me in the hallway and she's like, sing the Star Jungle Banner right now the way you did. And I was like, okay, cool. So I sang it. And then ever since then, she just put me into choir from choir i went to a spanish club i kept going from school to school and then the spanish club i think i broke my stage fright right there i didn't expect to sing in an auditorium full of like students and yeah i think after that it was kind of like a no-brainer like i didn't picture myself going to east side high school at the time or kennedy i was like yo i need to go <laughs> i need to get outside of these two so i i said i heard about pcti i heard about rosa parks i was like let me audition let me try to get in I auditioned, then I got in, and then ever since then, it was history. It's like I found music. Music has always found me, in a sense. I don't know. I've always been brought up in it with church, too. And I've uh, been around it with gospel, Baptist, and even going to the performing arts high school, I was always around, like, predominantly black. So it's like, come on now. I had so much soul influences, gospel around me. It was like a no-brainer. So, yeah. That's fire. And then that's you started listening to it. Like I said, just because it was around you? Yeah. I always gravitated. I mean, even it goes as far back as um, Puerto Rico because I was raised in Puerto Rico and then I came here knowing no English and I was brought up in Arecibo. And, and Arecibo, you know, in Puerto Rico, like it used to be like, you know, like some <laughs> plena or some salsa and I used to always gravitate to the instruments. Oh my goodness. I used to always just go to like the drum I used to be like with the dancing like yeah like (laughs) you you just be in there like Uh yes so yeah I just always had a thing and like I always even loved Ricky Martin back then Ricky Martin was so big when I was like you know I was six years old and I had like a Ricky Martin book bag and like oh no says like Uh it was like a big thing um but yeah like I think that's where my influence was I never liked doing church stuff I think I was mainly forced by my grandmother and my mom with that I was I started more of like in church i mean i started more in school and then went to church i was even a part of a church band and then we as a church ministry we traveled to maryland dc and different churches all over and stuff like that so that is where i learned how to be a, a worshiper i feel because I, I i think i told you about like the difference between a worshiper and a performer and just an artist and like the difference between the two so like yeah what would you say the differences are the differences between the two is that as an artist the pressure of pleasing your audience and putting up a show is more up in in your face. It's more like predominant. And that's mainly what's on your mind when you're up before you go on stage. You're trying to make sure you don't mess up. You're trying to make sure you get all the parts right. You're trying to make sure that everything is down to the T and which there's nothing wrong with that, but you can sense that when you're performing. When you're a worshiper, you're mainly just thinking of like, I don't care about putting up a show. I don't care about if it seems pleasing to you, I'm more of like trying to get the message of the song across and I'm trying to feel it through and through and I'm trying to make you feel it to a point that you're feeling the emotion behind it. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) it's like, 
So there's a huge difference, and I've seen I've seen Jennifer Hudson. There's a difference when you see Jennifer Hudson doing that in her own songs, and even Fantasia. You know, like she can sing, "If you don't want me, then don't talk to me." You know, there's times where I hear her, and she'll like she'll have that grunt. Like you were telling me, you know, me and me and Joe were talking about this the other day. Like you know, you you can sense when somebody's in the booth filling the song, and when someone's just singing it like a regular Sunday. So that's. Yes. yes. <laughs> like they're just singing a nonchalant chill, mm-hmm. but when they're in the performance, they get that grunt. Oh yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like you, you can sense the difference between the two. And I feel like a worshiper always knows how to put emotion behind a song. I've seen it, man. It's crazy. Like I've seen a girl go off riffs, runs, and not feel a word. But then I seen a female just simple as fuck kill it, and I'm just like touched. Uh-huh. I'm like, damn. Same performance, same show, and it's it's a beautiful thing. It's a view. I don't know what they got, but it's a gift. <laughs> and I'm happy that I could be included in that. I'm grateful. So I have to know, being that music has been such a, um important part of your life, what do you feel like is the biggest lesson that music has taught you? Um, the biggest lesson? To trust in yourself, not to believe everyone else around you. Trust your own voice. Um, To find your own your own muse into the whole thing be more self-assured it it touches you a lot of that it teaches you to be more grounded too uh it taught me to also trust more into like decision makings as well which is very funny that i said that but it's true like because in in music you have to know that whatever decision you're making you're not going to go flat or sharp yes you have to be decisive with what you put, what you add, and what you emphasize. But yeah, that's what I think. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. What about Zane with you? I, just, I, knew, I, knew. I know, I know. <laughs> I get like, I kind of get like this because I get into it. Yeah. Yeah. It's be in the motions. I know. I know. That's a good question, though. I had to. I had to. Word. Now, also, now you have the podcast. Now that's Reflections with Val. Like, what reflecting in your own life have you done and when did you start realizing you wanted to help others reflect on their situation to even yeah. help and add value because what you do is like also kind of a sense a little bit of what we do you know like that therapy on the other side like what motivated you to do it with other people beyond just yourself and how did you do it with yourself oh that's a good question too <laughs> i always had a love for uncovering and getting to know people since i could remember I was always a social butterfly in my family. So my mom and my brother and my sister would always be like, oh, she crazy. She's just talking to random people. Even in Puerto Rico, when they would leave me in a corner, I wouldn't be the girl to just stick to myself. I would just talk to a random stranger. Uh, I just found it so interesting because people have perceptions and it's so easy for us to believe that cover that we see. But I realized that there's always something underneath the cover and I was always intrigued by it. So I think... Since I could remember, I just always had that natural knack of doing that ability of getting to know others in a room, work a room. And I never even noticed that it was there. I thought it was like just my personality, but I guess it came with like the performance and me learning stuff along the way. So I came more comfortable with it. So, you know, within due time, I just I just realized that I love being able to aid someone somehow. Being able to just, if they just want to talk and just vent, cool. Like, I'm cool with that. I'll be here listening to that and um, reflecting on your life because I've had very a lot of moments in my life, especially being growing up in a minority area and in a home where I wasn't, you know, it's, there was not a lot of attention on me. You know, even though there was people on me and even though I had siblings in a minority area, it's kind of hard when you have a single mom, you know, single you know, parent home. So I always had time for to myself and to reflect. And I always had, you could either follow the crowd or you could be a leader and stay apart, stay away from it and be the outcast. And I always was the middle. I never was one or the other. I always was the leader and people followed me and whatever. And if they didn't and they thought it was whack, they would be like, oh, that's just Michelle. Just leave it be. You feel me? And they used to just leave me be. But like, if it wasn't that, they would just come around. I don't know. Like, it was just weird. So I was always that in and out. And I never judge people. And I think that's what also, like, helped. It's because I always played devil's advocate. I never said, you were wrong for that. No, I want to hear what happened to the whole story. I want to hear what you did and what she did or what he did and what included and whatever. You know, because I think it's important um, for everyone to hear all stories. Because I was very brought up in a home where my grandmother just 
the first story she heard was the only story that was the truth. Like you, <laughs> you couldn't come to her for nothing. So I think that also sparked up, you know, that reflections, the looking back, because I've seen the stubbornness in people and not accepting their flaws, not accepting their wrongs and thinking that they were right for years and knowing how much that ruins a relationship, how much that ruins and just adds a bad apple and just kind of falls and trickles down the tree. And you could either change it, you know, and not let it affect you and have a barrier or stand above it, you know, rise above it and be like, no, I'm not going to let this affect me. And I'm not going to let this trickle down on me. You know, like you did this, you are this way, but that doesn't necessarily mean I have to be this way. And I think it's very important for people to know that. And that's why I like to do that self-reflecting thing and that self-analyzation because a lot of people just don't do that. They like to just go along with their lives. This is how it's been. This is how it's worked. This is what I'm used to. And it's been working. But you've been suffering in that time. You're not acknowledging that. You're just comfortable in the suffer because that's what you have believed that you have to intake. But no, you don't have to intake. You're just settling. Like, wake up, move yourself and like face the wall, face your Goliath, right? In faith. Like, what is your Goliath? There's always multiple different Goliaths. Is it your vices? Is it sex? Is it, like, what is it? Is it drugs? Is it alcohol? Is it distraction? Is it procrastination? Like, figure it out. Go over the shit. Do whatever you got to do. If you need help, like, take the pride down and be like, yo, to be honest, I haven't been good, bro. My my Instagrams and my, my social medias have been saying that I've been good and I've been taking pictures, going to Bermuda and shit, but I've been fucked up. And it's okay to say that. But I feel like we've been living in a gen. Yeah. It's true. You make such a great point, though, because, you know, like reflections with Val, I think is going to really reflect that aspect of you that is... um so analytical and very thoughtful and gives that grace because it is important like how much hard work is it to look in the mirror and be like okay like i made a mistake how can i fix that aspect about myself and change it because change ain't bad right you know what i'm saying it's just hard it's hard because you say it's a practice right you you practice change you don't you don't just change you practice until that's just who you become yep right and when you're changing you know you're gonna people are gonna kind of weave in and out of your life so um i think my question to you is you know um i'm not sure if like you write like music or you prefer like to do um like covers and stuff but if you know when that that introspective aspect of yourself does it make you perceive music differently like when you're listening to music or you're reading lyrics because i saw you do the lyrics breakdown which i love thank you Um, (laughs) yeah when you're like breaking down music i'm sure that that gives you an extra layer right to see it yeah it Um, does it does give me that extra layer it's like a little um like what i tell people in my podcast is that this is a, a space of transparency no judgment and it's just for us to share information I want to share, I want to know what experiences you dealt with that I may not have dealt with, that someone out here may be able to, to, to take advantage of, to listen to, or to practice in their life, or maybe they may be going through it and they need to hear that they're not alone. And like, that's the whole purpose of it. Uh, I love the fact that I tie life into music with it too, because I love music therapy and I kind of want to do that as well on the side along with motivational speaking it's all like a thing that I'm wanting to do yeah it's all tangled so it's like yes music therapy shirt let's go perfect did y'all talk about this now yes I mean last hold on music therapy is coming back in April too is by the way people April 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 coming back April Okay, music think- therapy coming back in April. Check it out. But I think I was talking to Joe about this. You know, like um, not too long ago, I had him in my my last this last Sunday. He came into my show and everything, and I had him share a song that you know he was emotionally tied to that he could play at any time, and that you know it would take him to this place or this or this moment. And and those that's what I love that yeah. what music does. You know, that it brings us together. It it can. Where words fail, music speaks, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I think that's what's the therapy in music. And I like to to, to display that as well. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for your vulnerability. No, no, it's it's true. Like, it's true. I, I, think, I think with the reflecting thing, 
because of music and I, I generate all these lyrics like you said like I've generated so many lyrics from you see it in a different perspective when you're seeing it's just like not the surface you know you're kind of really breaking it down especially as somebody who sings and do you do you write or I am actually writing now <laughs> y'all don't see this but this is a fist in the hey. air yeah I've, I've wrote, written before it's just that I had so many emotions so many things that I always overthought in the moment that I was just like, I can't write them all down in yes. the song. So now I'm, I'm actually writing. Thank you. I love it. Upcoming work coming soon. Yeah. That boo people to Zane. <laughs> You're what not happened? out of here yet. Are you really? Was? We didn't cover your topic yet. I like, I like. Boo. Boo. Where are your So tell me, what is that song that brings you, like, what is what is a song that when you listen to it, it never fails to give you joy? To be honest, it's a lot of um, gospel. Sweet. <laughs> I can see that, though, considering your background and how that shaped you. I definitely, I could uh, totally. No understand. matter what I'm going through in life, um, I can, I can always go to my roots, to my gospel roots, and, like, listen to a Kirk Franklin tune um you know <laughs> you what know, like, i know something about because this is just something about that music that just has you surrender and just be like hey like okay <laughs> like i'm I'm dropping all the stuff down i'm I'm surrendering like you got me right like you don't want to put up a front no more you're like all right i surrender like i i, I give it up <laughs> no but i love that and and even r&b any kind of music really as long as it's lyrically like something that I can relate with mm -hmm. or anyone can relate with as long as it's something real. Like, that's why I like Eminem. You know, I don't mind listening to people like Joe Budden, J. Cole, Kendrick, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they rap about stuff that that we relate yes. with, that yes. day in day people go through. Yes. Even Rhapsody. She wrote this song called The Man, and it's about this little boy and you see him grow up in this minority area and him having to be a man because he was raised up in a, in a parent in a, in a home where it was just a single mom. Yeah. So like stuff like that, that I can relate with that. I'm just like, damn, like this is where I find peace. This is where I like, I listen to it. Yeah. And I'll go. And even, even when I'm mad, I'll listen to like some earth, wind and fire old school stuff to get my mind into like a better state. Yeah. What about you, Jill? For music, mm -hmm. what, was it, what was the exact? What's question? a song that when you listen to it, it brings you joy? Like no, like you know, you're going through something, you listen to it, and it, like it immediately gives you those feelings of, of joy? like peace or joy. Like all right, like I can get through this. Hold on, we got cinematographer Zane helping me out over here. We good? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um. There's so many songs. I mean, Wait, I'm it, to get. oh yeah, you're trapped. <laughs> Try to get him trapped out of here. I'll get sure. Who's he gonna climb over, Joe? <laughs> I, was, I was actually planning on doing that. <laughs> All right. Yo, Adios. drive safe, man. All right, sir. All right, sir. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about to call you. You can do a call in while you're driving. What? what? Yeah, that's true. Let's test it out. <laughs> Seriously, you down? No distracted drivers, man. No distracted. See, that's why I like uh, that. Ah. <laughs> See, I, try, I try to get him. I try to get him. I want you to be safe, man. We love you out here. <laughs> um, you know what's funny is I don't really look for My what. Uh, oh, thanks. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> um, <That was fine. laughs> I don't really go to music. I mean, I go to music for joy, but I go to music really, like you said, to reflect a lot and to just. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, get the sure. feelings out, get the aggression, just get my moods out, get the emotion out. I don't, I've never really been like a joy. Like I, I don't really listen to it for joy. That's okay. Like, I mean, I, I do have joy when I'm listening to it though. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Purpose isn't like, man, I want to feel great. I'm going to go listen <laughs> I mean, to this. I get music. it. Yeah, it's more so I'm feeling a lot of emotions and I want to help 
utilize this as a segue to help get it out. It's weird though because it, it is joy at the same time though. Sure, it's in the process. But when of I tell it, you like the, the songs, like you would be like, "What the fuck?" No, no, no. Are listen, you kidding me? We all, yeah, no, listen, no, no. That's we all got secrets. That's what I'm saying. It's okay as long as it makes you feel joyous. That's what yeah, I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, like yeah. it's, it's not like it's not even a serious. Just certain songs like you like like last time we had the one with sing for the moment. You know that or the I want to know or the black cloud. Like no, and I could songs. and I could even see it when you were playing with it. You were like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, my bag. Yeah, yeah, you were in your bag. I was like, okay, Joe. Yeah, or even yesterday with the ordinary love shit, we played one through four. That shit is so therapy. Yeah, ordinary love shit. Ordinary love shit yeah. by who? Joe Budden. Of yeah, course. He, Why did I even? It's four tracks. Tracks. He said he oh, said a nice. bar in there that I wanted to quote. I was I forgot what it was. It was something about pleasure. Oh no, something about people can't handle hard truths. But it was, there was so many gems. It was it was so many gems dropped yeah. in that, and I I respect it. I understood why you liked that song. Yeah, it was really good. Um, but beyond right beyond the music and all that, I kind of want to go with like my last question with the whole reflecting, right? So where do you find that balance in, you know, reflecting and looking back at the past and then going forward? Like when is too too much reflecting? You know, when is not enough reflecting? When do you feel like, okay, I've reflected enough and now it's time to make the change to go into the next level? Can you go I see what you're through saying. back and forth? Because I feel like I reflect a lot, right? But I still know how to go forward and move forward and do that. A lot of people, though, get stuck in reflecting. Sure. And where they get stuck in the past and don't know how to. So what's that transition like Present. for you? Oh, that transition was long. I think that transition lasted like three years uh, in that was to do with like because i had a grief i had a grieving period of a year when i was in the pain and in my bag and then i just said all right it's time for me to like go to therapy <laughs> i think that's when i started um realizing like okay it's too much reflecting i'm now just stuck in the past and it was so to a point that i even started looking for like the characteristics and the man that that had passed into like the current men that were like I was dating and I didn't realize it. So like, that's when I needed to have that wake up call with myself, but I'm not afraid to have that, that face to face mirror to mirror talk with myself. And I think that's why I've always been an outcast in a lot of group settings because a lot of people don't like to do that with themselves. So when they see someone who doesn't mind doing that with themselves and because I'm so comfortable doing that with myself, I'm also comfortable doing that with other people. And people are like, they don't know what to do with it. Um, some people stick, some people stay, and then I help, and then I uplift, and I enhance, like you, Joe. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and last then, time that they called me the enhancer. <laughs> yeah, he's the enhancer. <laughs> I think, yeah, but I get it. No, that's exactly what uh, Matt said. He said, you enhancing a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He but said, no, what you, you enhancing, you, you bro? Are, you are. You're Thank magic, you. man. He's an enhancer, man. Like, he'll, you'll be stuck somewhere in a dead end, and he'll be like, but this is another way. And then mm -hmm. you're, like, not in the dead end anymore. And you're just like, oh. You're, you're like, like, I didn't even know there was a way out <laughs> that way. Damn. Yeah, you're like, damn, man. I should have you around more often. What's yeah. going on? <laughs> you need a job? Like, yeah. <laughs> nah, thank you, thank you, thank no, you. No, it's true. It's like, that's that's what it is. It's like, I think that's what I realized a lot is that I've always had that in me, though. And, and like, even in high school, like, there would be, like, the group of friends that would always date, download Tinder, and there was that best friend of mine that would always bend and snap with whatever group she was about, and I would never change, you feel me? Like, I feel that would be, so hard. Michelle would be the same, and I would I'm be like, like, weirdos for life. And then, like, <laughs> yeah, I would stand off. I'm like, yo, you don't, you don't act this way. Like, what are you doing? Like, you just acting this way because the popular kids. Like, come on. And then I'll be like, that's lame, that's whack. And then they would get mad, and they'll be like, stop being such the mom of the group. And it's like, I'm not. You're not being, yeah, like you're it's not like, being a mom. You're just saying <laughs> it. It is what it is. It is what it is. And and even a lot of people nowadays, because I self reflect a lot, even self, I'm so self analytical that when I do a decision or make a decision. I guess I have a hard time noticing when I'm wrong. So they t they tend to tie that together. They're like, you just need to always be right. And I'm like, no, no but it's, it's not it's, about that. Yeah. It's just I'm just reflecting back and I'm looking at the whole scenario like I always do on both levels. 
and I'm acknowledging that what I did was wrong, but I need you to acknowledge that what you also did was wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like I can acknowledge as much as I could that I've done wrong and I could apologize as much as I can, but like, you need to do like, like we were just talking about because you know we were just saying accountability you need to be accountable like, too like I people will love love to point love to judge until and they fucking run into that mirror right. and they don't know how to fucking act yo talk yo, shit gun I'm mad. <laughs> yo, gun don't, play. don't play don't play it's Listen, true like, like oh. they love to be the ones <laughs> they love to be the ones to point and laugh and and i hate people who like because i've hurt you now you're gonna do hurt unto me. Of course, yeah. Like, we're now we're both miserable. <laughs> now there, there's nothing win. that satisfies that besides your pride and your ego. Then after that, you feel That's like temporary. shit. Yeah. You know, like it's not worth it. Yes, but we got Mr. Tay Gaines on the line. Yo, Tay, what up, sir? Not much, man. Actually, just came to the house. I was finally able to get a little listening in today. I'm able to get it back in and i kind of shot around at the gym for about 30 minutes okay yeah i saw you in there man i was about to say bro you just you know what i'm saying you're back because tay's back's been acting up oh, oh hold on i'm gonna yeah, pass man. i'm gonna pass i'm gonna pass nat the headphones okay hey tay what's going on Nat? how are you i'm good how are you it's so nice to hear from you tay because we don't get it often but it's like it's a gift <laughs> yes I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. That's the shot. Yeah. Um. Man, so far so good. We can't complain over here. We're making it happen. But it's nice to have there you back. Go. Yes, it's good to be back. It feels like forever. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but you make it easy for us, man. So. I try. I try. Yeah. Hello, is this How you Tay? doing? Uh, hi, Tay. It's, it's Val. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. This I'm is my first well. time ever talking to you. I heard a lot about you. Oh, I hope it's been good, Tay. Yeah, it's, it's been good stuff. <laughs> it's been it's been nothing but uh, you motivate others, and uh, you're the killer one out of the out of the crew here, right? You. Nah, I think I think that's I think that's between Matt Joe when it comes to the killer and the crew. <laughs> he said it only between Matt and Joe. <laughs> I see hey, what you did there. But but I right, tell you, so I don't hear you. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes, he can. He can hear yeah. me perfect. All right, so Tay, what questions you got for Miss Val over here, y'all? Before we get into what some the, topics and we wrap this uh, episode up, what questions you got for Miss Val? Miss Val, she has her Val podcast do? called Reflections with Val, and she's also a singer and a writer. Oh, a singer and writer. What as far as you think? I love musicians, though. I love these these guys. Yes, you do. You love musicians. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I I love them too, man. <laughs> I think I think what they do is great. What got you into singing? Uh, what got me into singing? Um, I think it, what got me into singing was the fact that I just couldn't stop moving to to the song or to a beat when I when I did hear it at any age or at any time like i just always stopped and responded to it so i think that was that was the first time that i realized like there's something different about music that the way it touches me and and then ever yeah. since then i was kind of like all right we 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 rolling with this and i kind of just picked up a habit and started practicing picked it up and that's it nice when it come when it came to song way what kind of made you pick that up i know some you know when it comes to singers, some of them, you know, like with music, but some of them try to find other writers for them. What kind of inspired you to become a writer? Okay. Uh, for me, it was kind of like I wanted to write about my own experiences and my own pain and everything that I've gone through in life. And I figured that who was the best person to write that but myself because I was the only one that gone through those experiences. You know, and even even now, it's still as as trying to get comfortable and more comfortable with songwriting i'm breaking that um bone even more like you still deal with ben mental writer's block as you write and stuff like that so you know getting over that because of how much experiences and emotions that may tie to an experience also may come in the way mm -hmm. of that but i think that's the reason why i picked up songwriting is because i knew that if i had somebody try to write my experiences it wouldn't 
come out the same. It wouldn't be the same. And sure, I would try to sing it, but it, it still wouldn't be the same kind of feeling or the message across. So um, that's why I try to pick it up. Oh, nice. Awesome. Thank you that's for awesome. asking. That's awesome. No problem. You're welcome. Um, and last question, how long have you been singing a song right and how long have you been doing your five Uh, I've been singing for like 18 years now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you're a bit. Yeah, I would think I'm I'm at, I'm at an elite now. I I think I did uh I picked up like professional vocal training and stuff in in high school when I got into a performing arts high school and then ever since then I went to NJ Pack, learned some more college. Got accepted to Berkeley College okay. of Music, decided not to go. It was too expensive. <laughs> it was like yeah. <laughs> But um okay. yeah, I think I think going through all of those experiences and learning a lot of those things like built me to the person that I am today and I'm so grateful. I got to be in a lot of like conference um, performances and councilman meeting performances, funerals, weddings. Like it was crazy. And now mm-hmm. I just kind of want to like take it to the next level. You know, I'm kind of ready to start popping out my LP, EP, you know, hopefully at the end of this year. <laughs> hey, there you go. You know, because I'm very soul, jazz, R&B. I love live instruments. So for my LP and EP, I really was adamant about having a band throughout the whole entire thing and just having it be so authentic acoustic and natural and raw and just beautiful so i'm really working on that coming to life and just taking my time to to bring that to life um but my podcast actually started not too long ago it actually started like two three months ago (laughs) so it's actually very exciting i love it because it's something that i always love to do i love to talk i love to get to know other people and i like to reflect back and and maybe try to advise somebody in another way or look into a darkness and, and, and maybe find a way or a light out of it. So that's why I decided to start my, you know, my podcast reflections of Val. That's what it's called. So yeah. Thank you for asking, man. You ask a lot of good questions over here. Hey, Mr. Down Tell. in North Carolina, right? <laughs> yes. Durham. Can't wait till we go there. We're going to be there. We're going to take a trip out there in the summertime. All right. So we're going to switch this up. Yeah, let me um, gonna have this back. So, no, no, no. We're going to remove this. Yes, and we're going to go speaker. And we're going to just. Exactly. Okay. Doing it. Making it happen, guys. Yes, yes. All righty, all righty. We don't need that, but whatever. We'll take it. Um. All right, so. We got we got Tan line. That's good. We got almost yo. And Zane was here earlier, Tay man. But yo, he, he had to leave. He had to leave. He had to go. He got work tomorrow early. By the time this episode is done, he might just be there, right? Um. Okay. So beyond, uh, just because don't do it unless he's talking because it's statics. So we gotta yeah. Um. Okay. So we got into Val right now. I want to get into some topics. Go right ahead. I'm ready for these uh, topics. Joe. What? <laughs> Talk to us. Yes. All right. So when I walked into my house, it was like some craziness going on over here. I don't know how the conversation even happened. Yeah, for real. I'm talking about people being bi and in relationships <laughs> and other girlfriends and guy. And I'm trying to tell them, listeners, I was trying to give y'all the sauce. I'm trying to like, no, stop talking. <laughs> Save it for the podcast. Right. Like no talking whatsoever. Right. But they let some of it out. So I want to know, what were y'all saying? Because I just tuned y'all out because I'm like, I'm just going to ask them to get on the pod. Right. So I tuned. Uh, yeah, we basically, it was it was on, is it Zane or Phil? <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast, Zane. <laughs> yeah, Zane. Yeah, Zane. So Zane mentioned how he have has a history of dating bisexual women. And then Natalie shared that she was also bisexual. And I was like, I'm what? Bad. I was like, cool. No, it's just, just I just never knew because you know, Nat was ever since I've met her, she's just always been in her corner. You know what I mean? Like she'll talk when 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 people approach, and she'll approach too, but she'll be like, hey, you know, small talk, nothing crazy. So like, I just never knew that. I was like, okay, Nat, I like, I see you, I see you. And and then Zane was like, to be no, I think it was you, Nat. You were like, to be honest, it's more open now that people, especially women that are, are more open to bisexuality. And, and I think that's pretty cool. I didn't know that neither did Zane. So, you know, what made you kind of like 
come up with this analogy or maybe oh. it's just some experience that maybe you've gone through? Or? Yeah, no, well, I was explaining to him that it's not that he's a, a bisexual a woman magnet. It's that there are just, it's just more common to be on the spectrum and to be, for instance, like, like, you know, how do I explain it? I think about, about it like, um, like, when you're trying to dress and you know it fits and it feels good and it's like it's like that it's like 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 Joe you look you don't when you look at another guy you don't find any sort of sexual attraction no. and it's very clear right yeah. okay so it's like that it's like if I see it like that so it's like oh I just like what I like I don't care about generals you know what I'm saying like I would be the I guess the best way to explain it would be like pansexual because I don't really I'm not worried about like what the person's generals look like like i would date a trans woman or a trans man or uh you know it doesn't matter to me you know what i'm saying like for me it's like having that emotional connection and again that's what makes it very complicated because people look at me and they're like oh well you have a a man and you have a daughter and it's like okay but neither am i jumping on everything that i see it's not like that it's like i can look at somebody oh well they're attractive in this way and i know my sexuality and i know it enough to be like, I have to be emotionally invested with this person to have a relationship with them. So, of course, I'm not jumping on every woman or guy I see. But, yeah, so that's, like, the best way to explain it. So, I, it, it was definitely experiencing, Phil, it's not you. It's everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. I, I In this generation, I feel like there's more of a normality and more of an acceptance sure. of going any other way you want. Yeah. And, and it's... Aw, you should have had some nights in that. But I think, and, and we also even spoke on, if you're in a bisexual relationship now, would you be upset if your bisexual partner now goes and does something with the same sex, even though you guys are in a relationship? Now, let's say I'm a woman and I'm with a man, but yet I want to date this hot-ass girl who's right here. Like, why, why, you know, would you get mad because I'm dating in our relationship? Or would you allow me to? Yeah, I want to know how all y'all see it. I think it depends how you would define a relationship. So, like, for instance, like, um, that's weird hearing myself. Talk. I know we were I used to that for a want, long time. Because you could tell once you go here, you can't hear it. It's true. So, you has got to stay right you here. Make, okay, that's great. Um, Yeah, so I, I do think that, um, let's just say, can't talk, text me. <laughs> um, right, you can send it. Talk. You can send it. Oh, recording. <laughs> no edits. No edits. Um. All right. And so, Tay, Tay, we still got you. Tay, where's your fabulous voice? Where are you? Oh, I there you talking. are. Um. Okay. So, um, I think it depends because, like, for instance, like, if you're gonna define being in an open relationship, for example, um, once once upon a time, my partner and I had a girlfriend that we um consensually shared to um have sex with and you know be in a relationship with and um it was it was great because at the end of the day like i learned a lot about myself in regards to that and like boundaries and certain things that i thought that i had no thought about even like my perception of jealousy changed i think and um it's really interesting yeah i want to know that yeah i'll tell you <laughs> and it's really interesting because you you think about it a little bit differently but I consented knowingly that he would be having sex with this other person. And I said, okay, this is fine. Like, I'm going to be engaging in that as well. And I think that it's okay. Like, you know, I know. So there wasn't that sort of, um, that feeling of betrayal, right? That you get when somebody like cheats on you. It wasn't like that at all. It, was, it d wasn't like that. So I think that as long as you're comfortable with it and you can reflect on why you're doing it i think it has to be for um i think everybody ha should benefit from it because everybody wants different things and one thing that i'm like really big on is not no one person can meet all your needs right this is why we have friends this is why we have different people who we love like we might share something with our friends or our family or a stranger or whatever you know what i'm saying and um when it came to that i think it's I think as long as everything is consensual and all parties are in agreement and you can come to each other and be honest with how you're feeling and, you know, that je that jealousy factor, because I think jealousy plays an important role. Um, 
but it, you have yes. to like be able to reflect. You get what I'm saying? I don't think that jealousy is valueless. I think it. I think it has a lot of value. Yeah. But I think we have to see what it is. It is it because I want this person to be only mine and mine only, or is it because I love this person and I don't want them to get hurt, right? So like I or I don't want to be hurt. Or, you know, so I think it's important to talk about. See, the things. thing with me, it's like, I'm straight. I'm straight as fuck. But, and you, you, I'm you, strictly, you know that. I'm strictly dickly, and I respect all parties. <laughs> strictly dickly. Yeah, that, I respect. That was, that's a, that's a, <laughs> yo, I know. I used to say that too. It's never true. Heard that one before. You're right. You never, you may never know. Who knows? I think I'll experiment that road when I'm in a marriage after like five, seven, maybe 10 years. I'll probably experiment and go elsewhere. Yeah. I, I know that. But, I know right now. <laughs> yeah, that's how you feel, but like. But you know, I respect all parties on it. But like, my thing is, I want to. Even though I'm strictly dickly, I want to be okay knowing that my partner can share if he's a sexually attracted to someone else in our relationship. I want us to have that open communication. It's not like we're hiding that from each other because i would rather him open up to me and tell me like listen like there's this girl who's really fucking hot at work and i really want to fuck her so could we like do something or something like that and then i'd rather him do that than like him keep that shit from me and then like have this vindictive and like lustful thoughts behind my back and then him act on it yeah so like that's my thing but then again it's like the woman in me is like would i be able to handle it would i get jealous and like that's why when you said that like you looked at jealousy very different you know like i kind of want to do the same because it's like i think we're 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 over it now i think we should get over it we should go mature women should not have that factor we should not be jealous we shouldn't have jealousy over one another and if we are we should check ourselves like why are we jealous yeah, it's very introspective when you realize, okay, I'm jealous for this reason. So that's why I say, like, I don't think that jealousy has no value. I think it actually serves a, a great purpose, but we have to be able to reflect. Yes. Right? Because like reflections, yeah. Yeah, because, <laughs> yes. like, in regards to, like, the, the jealousy thing, like, I'm at a point now in my relationship where I look at, I look at my partner and I'm like, man, papi, you ain't gonna, like, I'm not worried. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have the utmost confidence in our um level of communication and our our um the way that we can kind of see things and you know he looks at me he's like well he understands like he knows my secrets you know what i'm saying and he knows that like i'm not gonna fall head over heels for a guy because I, that's just not how i am like i have it's deeper than just the way somebody looks you know what i'm saying and that's just my sexuality and that's just what makes sense to me mm -hmm. but this is just what makes sense in our relationship and it's like you know if I agree with you. Like, I would rather have that honesty and that openness up front than to know that somebody betrayed me behind my back. Word. Because that's like, hurtful. Yes, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's hard to but trust somebody after could that. Could y'all, like, at this point right now, like, <laughs> let's just say June was gay, right? We've had that conversation, <laughs> too. <laughs> Aww. That's if, like, that's if you If you wanted to have, you know, relations with another man, my bad, you know, it's <laughs> I feel weird even saying it. Would you be? Would you give him the green light? Um, I think if no. he was outright, if he was gay, I would question why he was with me. For I, I so take long. I take this back. I can't even picture this any in my head because it's okay. my bad. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> no, but we all got. I got. Everyone's gonna get the question though, yeah, June. No, everyone, so, not so, not just Nat. Yeah, no. So if no, if he if he was, I would want him to be happy because if you love somebody the way that you truly say you do love somebody, especially. When you've been with them for a very long time, it's like it's deep. Like I said, it's deeper mm. than just that's my. Would spouse, you still? That's my you friend. would still be with him, like no, because okay, so that's that. No. That's my question. And I say that. That's my question. If you are gay, are you gonna be happy being with a woman? No. What if he's bi? Oh, if, if, well, then that's a conversation we have to have. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because if my thing is, says, is oh. in reality, like, look, so if you like men, you're not gonna be happy being with a woman, even if that person was your spouse for years. You'll be happy being my friend, but you're not going to be happy having a sexual relationship with me, knowing that you prefer sexual relationships with men. So, if he was bisexual, then that's a conversation that yeah. we can have. Then, then you know what I'm saying? And it depends if I'm open to that, you know, because let's just be 100% honest here as well. It's very complex dealing with other people's emotions, 
and other people's baggage. Yeah. And, and you, that's an added layer to your relationship. Yes. That's She's what right. You understand what I'm saying? She's so right. I'll give you, for an example, you know, like, it wasn't only... No, you're good. No, no, no. It's um static. Okay, you're good. Um, it's not only, um, you know, your emotions that you have to be kind to. You have to be... the kind to the emotions of your partner and kind of like what i was alluding to earlier like one person can't satisfy all your needs like for instance like you know i don't expect like the one person that i'm with my primary partner my life partner whatever to be um this perfect person that can meet all my desires and all my needs i think we have to be honest with ourselves and think okay like you know, what's something that, what's a part of my needs that I'm not getting here that I can get somewhere else? Like, June's never going to satisfy my artistic needs. He's never going to satisfy my need to want to work and to want to make my own money and to want to do my own thing. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, I think I think it depends on the individuals. Uh, I think that's important. I think it's important, too, because I think with if the individuals have a system and they're a team, it works. It works. Right? Yeah. It works. And, and it's not like you're solely depending on each other. But there's also that solely depending on each other because you guys only have each other. Yes. So it's stronger that way, in a sense. So it's just finding a balance. Tay, what about you? Could you, could, if your girl, if your girl was bi, would you let her have a girlfriend or have sexual ex- escapades with He's a girl? He's gonna be like, been there, done that. My, my girlfriend transsexual, so um, yeah, I don't have, I don't have a problem with it. I'm actually very open to it. And it's actually my first relationship with a transsexual partner. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so it took, it, took me, it took me a while to get used to it. But then at the while, I'm like, hey, you know, if you want to have a girlfriend, like, hey, having a girlfriend, I mean. Even, even if the Tay, hold on, even if you're not involved. Yeah, even if I'm not involved, like, shit. I even told her, like, hey, send your apartment. You want to move her in after a couple of years, dating a couple of years, and you and know, her are talking for a couple of years. You want to move her in? If you want a big family, tonight you want to see with me, and next night you want to see with her, hey, that's fine. Go in there. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Because um, you guys have that agreement. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's what I'm saying. Is it depends on that system. Yes. It depends on that system. It depends if you guys got it. Yeah. And, and you guys already know what it is. You know each other. You know you won't go anywhere. Yeah. But as for someone of my nature, man, I know I get. I don't know if it's a Leo thing, it's but part, it's I, partly a Leo. It's probably a Leo thing. <laughs> Where we just when we meet somebody, we fall some. We fall hard. You kill someone for that. Yo, like, for real, like, we nah, have loyalty. This is mine, right? See, it's funny too because this topic is always so interesting to have with people. If any of my listeners have been rocking since the beginning, <laughs> y'all know we went deep into this topic, a whole episode. It was a, like episode, it was early. It was like it was 11. Like, yeah, it was early. Okay. It was like 11-ish. I think Ooh. we top, we covered it like and you twice. called it polygamy and I was yes. like, it's polyamory. <laughs> oh, get it right. It was a, but wasn't that a good episode? <laughs> it was a great episode. I thought it was awesome. We all went, yeah. so they were just burning me and just killing me. So anyone that has, if, want, if you want to hear really dig into this. Go back to chapter eleven, and we'll touch upon it more. I gotta hear Zane's. I don't know, like to me, to me, it has to be some hot ass, like hotter than me kind of bitch. Like, no, no, if it's a guy, or like if if you're with a guy and he's by, he wants to go deal with a guy, or if you were with a man and he was okay with you going to do your own thing. Like me, I'm cool if I'm with a girl and she by and she wants to literally go be with a girl, dude, girl, go ahead, I give it a green light. Not a male, you know what I'm saying? That, it's a whole I don't want to. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that because I don't know what kind of AIDS or HIV you be getting. Of course, you know, if, if everyone got to be everyone got to be clean and shit. You know, that's a, to me that's a if you wrapping it or not. But it's more yeah. prone if it's if it's male to male contact though. You, you know that? Uh, like, I did don't you? Know. I don't. It's because so, you're you're going into the. I anal. never even. All right, let's. I'm just let's saying. <laughs> so you're more prone to contact sexual transmitted diseases if you're male to male versus female to female. I don't know if you knew that or not, no. but it's literally a statistic. So you got to be very careful. If you my man and you bisexual, are you pitching? Or are you catching? I need to yeah, know. Okay, okay. And then another thing: Are you rapping? Because if yeah. you're not. 
then you're more likely to get some kind of crazy. sexually transmitted disease. Also, get tested, everybody. It is okay. Yes, yes. It is. You On can live note. with HIV and be <laughs> safe and have a full life and, you know, go to Planned Parenthood. They have everything that you could possibly need, especially yes. if you don't have insurance, which I know is an issue right now. We need Medicare for all. Damn. Please vote. But yes. also, yeah, that's crazy. you know, um, speaking of trans- sexual transmitted diseases, one of my friends that I befriended, I was kind of like his mentor. He kind of came to me when he was like, you know, questioning uh, stages about females, yeah. how to approach. He never bagged one in his life. He was just straight out of high school. You know, I, I was smoking on a bridge in Patterson and he just saw me, you know, and, and that's how we met. Tell me why, like, after I advised him and told him whatever I told him about women, I said, listen, you're going about it all the wrong way. OK. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Guys. All right let, me, let, me, let me really huh. win and how to get a girl. OK. He took huh, my you advice. Work huh? You work tomorrow? No, I, I, I think I do. Yeah, yeah. You do. We're going to have to sit down and talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I, I literally <laughs> told him all this. Tell me why he finally gets girls, hits me up a year later, literally rec- recently yeah. this year, tells me he f- met a girl in college, has been with her, she dorms. Tell me why this bitch gave him herpes. Damn, dog. Herpes. Damn, actually, no, we're not talking about <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. We should. No, that's a good thing. <laughs> no, that's thing. a sexual, yeah. sexual... I mentioned this in one of my podcast oh, episodes, yeah. and it's like, she knew. She knew the whole time. So, like, this wow. is why I wanted to bring it up. This is like, yeah. if you met some girl, you were like, she's hot. Like, she's great. I met her in college. You're 21. You're, like, not really asking for much. You guys kind of get into it. And then you guys fuck. And then it's like, great. You're dormant. And then, like, two months later, she tells you, oh, by the way, by the way I've right. had herpes and I didn't tell you. And, like, I think you have it, too. Yeah, but I, what do you do? Yeah. I think that's, that disclosure is important, too. But, you know, at the same time, let's think about mm-hmm. hookup culture. Right. Is it is it like how many times have you been in the heat of the moment and shit just goes down? and You're like, you're not thinking about if this person might have some sex that's transmitted true. because let's be let's be also honest here with like the facts, the facts, mm-hmm. even if you have unprotected sex with somebody who is HIV positive. That first time, you are not guaranteed to get a sexually transmitted uh, infection, which STI is now. Um, but you're you, mm. even if you get tested, right? You won't be. Um, it just it would have to be on multiple occurrences. I didn't know. That. Yeah, so it has to be on multiple occurrences for for it to happen, and the person that who, is like the dictionary of <laughs> Google dot com. Right. Um, Ask her; she knows. Yeah, I and I only say this because I have clients who are HIV positive who I tattooed, you know, and I deal with blood and things of that nature, so I have to know these things. Um, but yeah. I also have family who is, you know, who, who is living with HIV positive. I mean, for. 10 20 you know let's we'll say 10 years because that's the reality and they've had children who are born negative and they have healthy relationships sexual relationships that their partner is not contracting anything um okay. so i do think it's important to, to be well educated on these sure. things i think i agree for sure because you know at the same time there are people who are born with it for instance from their parents that didn't contract it sexually but should you know, disclose that. And I think mm-hmm. the disclosure is important because you want to give somebody informed consent, right? Is what we like to call it informed That's consent, true. right? So you give somebody all the information they need to make the decision and then allow them to make a confident decision themselves. So in, in that case with, with your yeah. friend, I do think it's important if you do have, you know, herpes or, or hepatitis or something like that, that is treatable and, and you can live with it. And you can, again, live a full, healthy happy life with it it is important to disclose that information there's a um instagram page called i think it's called my boyfriend has herpes and i know people are gonna laugh when they hear that <laughs> but yeah i know but um it's awesome because um the she just talks about like certain things that happen in her relationship with her boyfriend and kind of how they transitioned and just certain things even just like um like just sexual needs desires um you know uh having the right protection being honest with friends even like her explaining like her talking with her friends and just that conversation where she talked to her friends and her friends like oh yeah i have her too and i was like oh well then this is this is normal because we're keeping it under control and we're not you know what i'm saying and this it's like it's not we're not in the 50s anymore you know what i'm saying and i think we're in a place yeah we're in a place where i think we should 
allow for informed consent and enthusiastic consent right with each other because it makes right. sex more fun and more enjoyable and like that's what we want right of course so i, I feel like that's being raw and honest too like just like here yeah. this is the truth this is out here and it's okay exactly. if you don't want to engage with me you know what i'm saying we're not we're not dealing with this shit like you know so i think it's important to to be honest and talk about that stuff word yeah, i feel that, that. that was we, we are gonna get into that more um in later episodes but we are gonna wrap this up i don't want june to shoot me <laughs> <laughs> uh now nah, shout, shout out to, shout out to june he's the man y'all val thank you for coming no, on thank you for having me guys right. it was a pleasure you already got you got to come on again i am but i Thank feel like you. we could like go on for like another hour or two. yeah we could we really we could, could. <laughs> yeah and like Damn. just kick it Call and me just that go i'll be here <laughs> hey yeah, make real. it happen all right um <laughs> Also, March 21st, you're going to be hosting our live podcast. Yes, so, so please fun. come out. It's going to be great. And I'm so excited. Thank you guys for giving me that opportunity, by the way. Matt and I are so excited. We're going to kill it. Yeah, I'm going to be performing are. there, too. Yes. So, we're yes. To work. Oh, my gosh. We're so excited. Yes. yes. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And very soon, we have a major ma- announcement for y'all. Yes, that's going to be exciting. Right? But y'all not going to hear it nah, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So we'll I see. Know about it. What y'all want to shout out for the? Yeah, she knows about the major announcement. Yeah, <laughs> uh, she's been seeing all the behind the scenes work <laughs> for it every day in Sprint. Of course. Now, Tay, what you got? Anything that you want to shout out for the week? Anything you want to drop? Any sleepers? Uh, Val, same thing. If you have anything that you sleeping on, I know the people are sleeping on out here. Any TV show, song, music, podcast, anything that's out there that you want to put the people on. Uh, Nat, you already know too. So anything? Do I go first? I could go first. Do you want to go first, Tay? Uh, no, no, you go first. You do it. Nah, you go, bro. You got this. Mike's on you. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to give a shout out to it's a Netflix series called Earth at Night. I think that's the I think the name of it. Um, it's actually all about like the uh, animal protein insects and I mean you see fish and sharks and things like that but it's all about like the activity that they carry on at night and, and it's a full moon um, more specifically so I thought it was pretty interesting because you don't really see a lot of shows where they have animals hunting and stuff like that at night so I tend to watch it and I got like a new surround sound so I feel like I'm actually in the jungle when I'm watching it so yeah, I gotta check that out. Good shit, good shit. Um, I'm gonna do mine. I'm gonna give a big shout out to Lisandro. Uh, he was on our podcast. All right, couple episodes back, not a couple episodes back. We flying through these episodes. He was in the the early hundreds, I believe. Uh, but yeah, shout out to him, man. He just dropped a track. I believe it's 3 a.m. in Garfield. Go check that out. Um. He's the man. He's been out here grinding, working, putting in work. He's working on some other shit right now. I can't tell y'all about some stuff I've seen. I know. Can't tell y'all. Sorry. But also, he's doing something really, really dope out here. He's actually uh, coaching. He's, I believe he is the freshman basketball coach. Yeah, freshman. Yay. For a freshman basketball coach for, for Lodi Jinx. Y'all in sync. <laughs> Yo, we really are. Uh, episode right? yes so shout out shout out to him man he's been killing it. yo shout out to my dog every time someone leaves the, door, the bathroom open she just attacks the fucking toilet paper that is princess why are you all it, it wasn't me it's a, it's zane's <laughs> i think probably it was it. all right but anyway yeah he has a couple games coming up um this is the schedule i want to make it to a game it's at 4 p.m but so so sorry sprint i'm just gonna have to leave work because i don't i don't get out so i'm gonna take a long break yo and just go to a game um, but only a local one though, because my car, you know, we having issues. But all right, what's today's date? Today's the seven. the seventh. So he got one February eleventh at yes. Elmwood Park. February thirteenth, Rutherford. That's uh, actually here in Lodi. Then February eighteenth versus Garfield. That one I really want to go to. That's probably the one I'm gonna be at. It's a four p.m. February eighteenth to playing Garfield. Then they got Manchester. Or just hit up Lisandro. Follow him on Instagram, okay. Lisandro underscore five nine four something like that. Represent. Yes. All right. Now, what you got? 
Um, I actually have two because we talked so much about sex stuff <laughs> today. <laughs> um, so the first one is um Unbound Babes. They're just really great and re- they're um a, an adult sex toy uh, shop. Um, but they have I mean all like as far as any of your needs go, they they got it. I mean down to like non latex condoms for people who are allergic. Um, they have different um items of that nature. Um, and also um on Instagram, sex positive families. I think it's such a great instagram but it just talks about those conversations that you can have with your your kid your teenagers that are positive and are important to have because it's just a part of life and it's better to have them sooner than later versus kind of throwing them all on it on the talk it's you know know, the talk jaylene's a page yeah and it's it's a transition you know your story Yo. It's hilarious. It shouldn't <laughs> even want to out here, yo. I don't know. Mel's gonna get there. It's just coming. Yeah, man. So you know, I, listen, we we you know we call it what it is. Yeah, exactly. And, See, yeah, you know, now you gotta think and, of it later yeah, on in life. Listen, it's true, they're getting older it's true. out here. So, you know, um, sex positive families is such a just such a great um page you know when it comes to talking about those things and just inciting those conversations it gives great tips and advice and um yeah y'all should go check it out word and it actually reminds word. me of something i gotta tell you off mic she knows about it about my other podcast idea i won't be in it i'd be producing yeah but maybe i'd be it. who knows maybe you <laughs> might like my idea too then if it's ooh, in regards to that ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna say it on air. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Just yeah. Much. I'm ready. Too, yeah, I can't wait till off air. What's up? <laughs> say <laughs> y'all. Well, bye, people. No. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Okay, I'll, it's my turn now. So I'll say my little last little remarks. Uh, <laughs> no, um, to, I think the thing that stood out to me the most this week was um, Kali Heat and Disclosure came out with a song, and I think I want to shout it out because it's right around Women's, um, you know history month and it's like perfect but i like the lyrics in it because it's like really cool and it's basically something that i didn't expect from disclosure to come out with and it says he keeps leaving you for days i don't know what you are wait what have you been waiting for so you've got your love locked up instead but something better is waiting for you at the door you don't know your worth all the things i know that you deserve say it's not real if it doesn't hurt find someone you know will put you first so right Bars. there come on now if that's not talking on like woman get up and wake up and know your worth and let's go yeah. so i just really wanted to shout them out because it's like i see why he dropped the single around this time it was kind of like hello i see a woman working out here you know and i just wanted to tie that in because i'm performing this weekend at a woman speak up hey event. well actually how did it go because you got to speak it into existence because it's not going to be out People gonna hear this after, so how did it go? You killed it. Uh, obviously, I killed it. Hey, <laughs> I was saying two womenly powerful songs. You made it the was crowd great. go wild. Make the crowd go wild. Different cultures of women up in there standing up, showing power. Single moms, not we out here. You know what I'm saying? Fire. F- women from different walks. Uh, maybe shelters coming. I mean, I know there's some women that done and been out in shelters with their babies. So like, we have some power in there for sure. But yeah. It's dope. That's it. Yo. Now we out. We all had fun, Tay. Woo. I'm giving you a pound right now. You just can't feel it. All right. You feel it through the air. <laughs> all right. Um, That's it, people. Chapter. I don't even know. I'm losing count. We don't know. Who knows? Okay. But therapy without a degree. We out. Live podcast. Go get your tickets now. We also got meet and greet tickets. All right. So you can finally meet Nat. Everyone's been wanting to meet Nat. So I was like, you know what? Let's just do the meet and greet tickets. Yeah. All right. So everyone could go meet her. We out, people. Peace.